installing Windows and drivers for your PC is a necessary evil. No one wants to do it, it's boring as hell, but you've just got to power through it. A lot of sitting, waiting, I'd be lying if I said it was interesting. That said, this is a stage where you actually get to use it. So let's begin. Greetings everyone, my name is Proto, and today I'm going to be going over the steps you need to take to ensure you get your PC off the ground. I am assuming that you have built your PC already though, otherwise check out last week's video in the playlist, which should show you how I put mine together. Back on topic though, in this week's video I'll go over a step by step process for installing Windows and the drivers so you can actually use your PC. I won't go over optimizing Windows for gaming, nor how to get games, programs, and all of that stuff. Those are for later episodes. So if you're one of those impatient viewers and you've already built your PC and you can't wait, literally, then it might be worth looking at written guides online. Anyway, starting with the installation, the first step is to wipe or clear a memory stick. You are going to have to do this first step on another PC though. This can be an old one, a parent's laptop, or a school one if they let you do that. Speak to the tech department if you must. Otherwise, the best alternative is to buy a disc with Windows on it. But those are slow and expensive, so with this in mind, I recommend you get a memory stick just because it's easier, it doesn't require you to buy the DVD reader for your PC, and everyone has a memory stick that's over 8 gigs. Though I do think the minimum you can use is a 4 gig one. So to make sure that the memory stick has nothing on it and it's in the correct file system, you're going to have to format the drive. This is really easy though. So in Windows, go to the bottom left of the screen where the Windows icon is and right click it. This should bring up a bunch of options. Go to the one with File Explorer on it. That should open another window like this. Find this drive either via My Computer or through the drop down on the side. And right click on the memory stick. Move the mouse up to format and click on that. Now you should know that formatting the drive deletes all the data on it, absolutely everything. So if you have anything precious on that memory stick, just copy it somewhere else beforehand. But yeah, for capacity, just select the max it will go, and for file system, choose NTFS. Allocation units are best left how you find them, and select quick format. It doesn't really matter what you name it since Windows changes that anyway, but just click start and another pop-up will appear, warning you about erasing all of your data, after that, again, just click OK. Now just let it go and do its thing, and finally, once it's done, click OK and close. Next, we're going to be getting that Windows installer onto that memory stick. So to do this, go to the Windows software download page, link in the description by the way, and click on the button that says Download Tool Now. After it's downloaded, make sure that your USB stick is connected to the PC, and either click the icon on the bottom left of the browser, where you just downloaded it, or go back into the file manager and click on Downloads. This should be where all of your downloads from Chrome, Internet Explorer, or any other browser go. Double click on the Windows Media Creation tool, and it should pop up with a smart screen page, saying, are you sure you want to install it? Click yes, and it should begin to run it. Again, just wait for it and accept the EULA. Next, we come up to a page like this. Since we want to install Windows on another PC, we're just going to select that. Create installation media for another PC. Click next. The next bit, you can leave how you find it, you want to make sure that the language is set on your one. So if it's English, go for English, German, go for German, and so on. In addition, you should find that you have the regular Windows 10 selected. Whilst there isn't much difference between the different versions, just leave it on this one, not the single language and not the end version. Lastly, under architecture, make sure that it's x64. This is super important. As stated, x64 is 64-bit and x86 is 32-bit. The reason you want x64 is because not all programs work on 32-bit systems, and it doesn't play nicely with applications or systems that contain more than 4 gigs of RAM. So just select x64 and then click next. So now we've prepared the memory stick, make sure that the USB flash drive is selected. Windows will automatically find the memory stick though if you have more than one on your computer, make sure that the correct one is selected. In my case it was the F drive in Windows. If you're not quite sure just open File Explorer and have a look which one it is. Now upon clicking next, I'll load everything onto the USB stick. Be patient, go make yourself some tea. Finally, when that's all done, click finish. Now for the complicated stuff. Remove the USB stick from that PC and plug it into the one you want Windows on. Then turn that PC on, making sure the mouse and keyboard is already connected. What you should see is a splash screen. In my case, it said that I need to press the delete key and spam that to get into the BIOS. For most systems, getting into the BIOS will either be the F2 key or the delete key. Spam the shit out of that key, seriously. As if you miss the short window of time, you have to turn your PC off and back on again, again waiting for that splash screen. 
So after spamming the delete key, I got into the BIOS. Quite simply, all we want to do is make sure that Windows boots off of the USB stick. So look at your motherboard manual if you need to, but it will probably be similar to mine. Your mileage may vary though. I went into settings, boot, and then found an option listed as boot option 1 to 13. Click on boot option 1, which is the first one I'll look at, and change that to the name of your USB stick you put Windows on. It might be difficult to find it though, but in my case, it was on the USB key line. After that, click on save configuration and reset. And now when your computer restarts, it will run the Windows installation using the files on the memory stick. Now after it resets, let it boot normally and now it gets interesting. On the first page, adjust it to your liking, but it was fine for me. After that, click next. For the sake of timing, I have sped things up. Once at the activate Windows page, it is a good idea to put your Windows product key in now. If you haven't bought one yet, click on I don't have a product key and select the edition that you'll be purchasing. For me, I chose Pro because that's what I have, but for the majority, that will just be the regular Windows 10 Home. Anyway, click on your version and click Next. Followed by Check and Next in the EULA. And then click on Custom, Install Windows Only. This is a fresh install of Windows, so that's completely new when you complete. It doesn't bring up any of the old crap that you have on your drive, and this should bring you onto a new page. Now, since I only had one drive, only one showed up, but if you have two, make sure that the correct one is selected that you at least want to load Windows onto. You can only tell which one is which by looking at the file size, i.e. if you bought a 120GB SSD and a 500GB hard drive with your intention to install Windows on the SSD, just look at the one that says 120GB. If you have more than the usual amount of drives, you can delete the different partitions. This is normally for people who've already put Windows on a drive and now want to do a fresh install. All that does is make the original one bigger though, it won't actually get rid of it so to speak, it won't magically disappear in thin air. This is more common if you've already used this drive on another PC before, as I've just said. Anyway, click on the one you want Windows to install on and click new. Make sure for the size the max amount is selected and click apply. Click OK and then make sure before you click next, you have the largest partition selected, which should be a primary one, not the system, system backup or system reserved one. And then sit back and make yourself another cuppa. Now let it do its thing and finally let it restart. This should bring you back to the same screen you started with. Where if you click on next, it will tell you to install. Don't click on anything like that. Just turn off your PC by holding down the case power button for no longer than 10 seconds. Mine's about 5. And then take out the memory stick. Now this time you want to get into the BIOS again. For me that was done by spamming the delete key. Go back to where you last found the boot options. Again that was for me settings, boot. And this is where you change the boot option 1 to your primary boot device, such as your SSD that you install Windows on. This is really important, do make sure that you select the drive that you installed Windows on. In my case you can probably see it as two different versions, there's a regular one and the UFI one, which both have the hard drive or hard disk on it. Just select the one that isn't UEFI. For me that was the hard drive, so I selected the hard disk option. If you've got more than one storage drive, select the right one obviously. If at first you don't succeed, try a different option. Then go to save configuration and reset. After it resets, it's just going to change some settings, but you've finally installed Windows. When you get onto this screen, select customize, followed by turning all of these settings off, and then click next. Then rinse and repeat. Click next. Then with the next set of settings, leave smart screen on, but turn everything else off, and let Windows configure itself. Now the reason we've turned so many things off is because Windows 10 just basically harvest so much data from you and turning a lot of these settings off will just mean that they can't harvest as much data from you. Next week I'll show you how to properly configure it, but again, that's next week's video. Anyway, give it a name and this will be your username when the computer starts and then a password. Again, let your PC configure itself and give it some time. If it flashes or does some other crazy shit, let it be for a minute. Congrats, Windows is set up. Now to install the drivers. This will allow you to play your games, connect to the internet, and make the screen look a hell of a lot cleaner, etc. And that's because right now, all you have the basic Windows drivers that come with your system, the generic ones at least. Start by connecting your PC to the internet. Now the way you can do this is by either connecting an ethernet cable from your router to your PC, or by using a driverless, driverless is really important, USB to Wi-Fi adapter, though a cable is probably your better option. If you can't do that, just go back to your old PC and format the memory stick again, Follow by putting the drivers on it that I'm going to announce in a minute. So once your PC is connected to the internet, launch up your browser like Microsoft Edge from the taskbar, and in my case, I already had Chrome installed, but this doesn't matter. Now as for the drivers you need, you 100% need the graphics card driver 
as well as the chipset drivers, USB drivers, and network drivers. You can pretty much find these from just two sites. Start by knowing what your graphics card is and what your motherboard is. You need to know on the basic level who designed the graphics card and what the model number is. For the motherboard, you need to know the manufacturer and also the model number. For example, my graphics card is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980i with the Gigabyte Extreme Gaming branding on it. Pay attention to the NVIDIA and GTX 980i as it tells us that we need to go to the NVIDIA website. Just do a quick Google search, go to drivers and download GeForce Experience as it is useful to have, but not necessary. Then go to GeForce Drivers. Going off of my example, mine is a GeForce card, so I select GeForce. Next, it says 980i. So it is part of the 900 series because that number follows that generation. Then I select my card, which we've established is the 980i. Afterwards, select what operating system we used, which is basically what version of Windows or Linux or Mac OS, but this should be Windows 10, 64-bit. Then language, which is English in my case, and lastly, all. Click search and select the most recent one. In my case, that was the Game Ready Driver released on the 14th of December. Again, that'll probably be different for a lot of you, but click on it and click on agree and download, and then move on to the other drivers. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU and you have an AMD one, then all you have to do is go over to the MD website and click on drivers and support. Select your operating system, which should be Windows 10 64-bit, and download the most recent Radeon software, ignoring all of the other ones because you don't need them. As for the motherboard section, in my case, I own an MSI x 9 s Gaming 7 motherboard. This means that I need to go over to the MSI website and download the drivers from there. Now, when I arrive at the website, I need to find my motherboard. I can do this by going through several filters, yada, 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 all the rest, basically, until I eventually find it. I want to stress that it's very unlikely that your manufacturer will also be MSI. If you have an Asus motherboard, go for the Asus website. If you have an ASRock motherboard, go to the ASRock website, and so on. Just to make sure that you end up finding your model, the exact one. After you've found it, there'll likely be a section where you can download it. For me, that was in service, and then drivers. I want to download all of them, checking that I'm not downloading something twice. Ignore the utilities, they're often crap. And so now if you open the downloads folder in Windows, you can see that a different software is there. The order in which you install them doesn't really matter though. That said, I do want to give a few tips. To install them, double click on one of the icons. If it looks like a zip file or it just opens up something else when you double click on it, close that, right click on that folder and click extract from zip. If you're not sure what you have to click on to install it, it's normally the executable file with the file extension .exe or it's just labeled as setup. Try to install them once at a time and once you're done with that specific driver, either delete it or move it to the desktop or somewhere else so that you know you've already installed it. That should be rather straightforward. And lastly, I'm going to go over how to register your Windows key if you haven't already. First, when buying them, don't pay full retail price. It's not so much of a, if you do, you will die, but more of a gesture to save yourself some money. There are plenty of sites online where you can buy them for dirt cheap. And even my copy of Windows was like 25 pounds, rather than the 100 pounds or 150, 200 pounds retail that you get from the home and pro version. Places like eBay or G2A.com is where you can get dirt cheap prices for those Windows keys. Buying from other dodgy sites will probably end up with you £25 out of pocket. Remember that all you need is the code, not the disk. That said, I can't guarantee that you will get a working one, so just make sure that you have a way of getting your money back if things go tits up. If you need to activate it, right click on the Windows icon in the bottom left of the screen and click on System. From there, you have the option to change your Windows activation code or add one. Another way is to right click on the taskbar at the bottom and then go to settings. Then that's followed by going to home, followed by update and security. If you click on activation, you can also enter your code in there. Good stuff. Anyway, hopefully this video did help you out of looking to install Windows and drivers, but can't get your head around the process. Also, whilst I'd like to include other information like installing programs and optimizing Windows, this video will just drag on and be way too long. So that's for next week, or better yet, later this week. Thanks for watching, if you have any questions be sure to ask them down in the comments below and hit me up on Twitter. Again, this community is really friendly so if you're stuck do tell us. Like this video if you have enjoyed, now's a really good time to subscribe. Anyway, see you next time, until then, this has been Proto, adios. Back, back, back from the dead.